Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. As usual, I am Josh Strife Hayes. This is Daily Strife, a daily update video where we talk about general geek rumours and nerdy news from gaming to technology and all that kind of stuff in between. I hope you're well. It's Sunday. It's a nice, relaxed, chilled out Sunday evening. Got a couple of things I want to chat about before we get into the big story tonight. First of all, I had a really nice YouTube comment from someone yesterday. I'm going to stick it on the screen right now. I don't mean to embarrass you if this was you, but I want to read it out because it's really important and I think it's something that I can take to heart and do better with. Comment simply reads from the YouTuber PCG720 and it says, Gotta say, I like the new show slash format. Feels more like a conversation than someone just telling me gaming news and that being it. You know what? You're spot on. And I think that is... It's probably one of the biggest strengths that I've got being a smaller YouTuber, that I can actually chat to you guys and have that kind of one-on-one -on -one connection, read every comment, reply when I can. So I'm going to take that to heart and I'm going to try and do that more. I'm going to try and make sure I'm involving and interacting and seeing what you guys are up to as well. It is more of a conversational piece and less of a an academic kind of diatrite where I just keep talking. Yeah, we're going to keep it friendly, keep it conversational. Following on from that, before we get into the big gaming news stuff, I really want to play some games with you guys. Now, I don't mind what games they are. They can be real-time strategy games. I'm a big fan of Command & Conquer, Supreme Commander, Age of Empires, things like that. They can be first-person shooter games. They can be action-adventure. They can be beat-em-ups, whatever they want. They can be tactical. They can be Factorio. Although, let's be honest, if we start playing Factorio, we're going to need a good week before we do anything else. But I would like you, if you would like to play some games with me, to hop in the Discord, link in the description below, say hi, and suggest something. And what I'll probably do is we'll chat for a bit, we'll get it onto stream, we'll play together, I'll record it, then I'll even throw up a video if you beat me, showing how you beat me, or if I beat you, showing how I beat you. Could be good fun. Okay, let's get on to some news now. Let's see what's going on. Three smaller stories before we get to the, the more main story. First of all, is EA returning to Steam? Maybe. There is a rumour going around that EA, which has not had games on the Steam platform since 2011, when it launched its Origin platform, EA may be returning. And the main piece of evidence we have for this, and I get this is sketchy at best, so I'm taking this with a big grain of salt, is EA posted a tweet of a mug with Steam coming off it. I'll put a picture on the screen right now. It's just a picture, not a moving GIF, but it's just a mug with Steam coming off it. Now, I mean, that's... That's more likely than a direct denial. They're not saying, no, we're definitely not coming to Steam. It's more of a chinky, cheeky kind of wink and a nudge saying, hey, look, we might be coming back to Steam. That'd be great if you are, because I want a good way to buy your games, and Origin is not a good way. So maybe they're coming back. How about Baldur's Gate 3, eh? Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, two of my favourite games ever made. I've even got them. I've got them on my shelf up there, Baldur's Gate 1 and the, the Sword Coast and the Throne of Baal expansion pack, Baldur's Gate 2, the Shadows of Arm, oh, amazing, amazing Western RPGs. And Baldur's Gate 3 confirmed by Larian Studios, the same people who made the absolutely brilliant Divinity, Original Sin 1 and Original Sin 2. I mean, they made all the Divinities, but Original Sin 1 and 2 were just fantastic. They channeled the spirit of Baldur's Gate better than any other game ever has, so... I'm excited about those. And we finally, in the third and final rumour, have the first confirmed game for the PlayStation 5. I say that, it's not a confirmed game. It's a studio who have confirmed 100% that they are working on something. Now, the studio is called Bluepoint Studios, and the only thing that they're really famous for is not their original games. It's actually their remakes. They're extremely well known for their remakes. Now, Blue Point Studios were responsible for the HD remake of Metal Gear Solid, the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, the Uncharted collection, the Nathan Drake collection of all those three games, and the Shadow of the Colossus remake on the PlayStation 4, which was phenomenal. So these guys obviously know remakes. They also did the God of War collection, 1, 2, and 3, I think on the PlayStation 3? Or the PS4, one of those two came out for. The only original game I could really find from these guys was Titanfall. Now, Titanfall wasn't a bad game at all. You know, Titanfall was pretty damn solid as a game, pretty good fun. But if those guys are definitely known for remakes, maybe we can be expecting 
a remake collection to be one of the first things we see on the PlayStation 5. And I mean, would you be against that? If you wanted a remake game for the PlayStation 5, what would it be? I think we can definitely upscale some of the Uncharted games, get them on there too. Maybe the Metal Gear Solids on the PlayStation 5. Maybe some of the old classics. See what Tekken would look like on the PS5. Oh, we've got a recent medieval remaster, haven't we? So maybe that's there too. Okay, we've had some rumours. We've had me thanking you in general for watching. And we've had a kind of invitation to play some games. What about the news story? What's going on today? Well, remember how Bethesda have been... I mean, if, if failure was a rugby ball or a football, they have grabbed it, they have got it, and they are sprinting with it. They are giving it their all. They are trying so hard to make us hate them. And Bethesda are doing a remarkable job. And Bethesda managed to steal the hatred away from Blizzard. Blizzard, the makers of World of Warcraft, were doing some terrible stuff with the whole banning uh, Blitzchung from the Hearthstone tournament and all that kind of you know, pro-China stuff. And then... Bethesda stole the attention away, but now Blizzard are looking over at them going, oh, no, 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 this ain't happening. We're going to steal it back. We're going to take take that terrible, bad press back. All eyes back on us now. What have they done? Well, you'll see in the title of this video, it says that Blizzard cancels the Q&A. Let's just slow it down. They haven't fully cancelled it. At BlizzCon, which is Blizzard's big convention, normally there is a Q&A, question and answer session. Now, these Q&As for the last couple of years have had some famous, famous moments. You guys may have heard of the red shirt guy. It's become a bit of a meme at this point. Many years ago in BlizzCon, a guy in a red shirt simply asked where a character chronologically was because in a book, he was alive, but in the game, he died. Or the other way around, one of those two. And the developers and the designers and the law masters couldn't answer. So Red Shirt Guy managed to outsmart the Blizzard historical boffins at their own game. And the Red Shirt Guy meme was born. And then a few years ago now, when Diablo Immortal was revealed, which is the Diablo for mobile phones, which led to the whole don't you guys have phones fiasco. Another guy in a red shirt simply said, is this an out of season April Fool's joke? And the crowd went wild and these guys became remarkably famous. So Blizzard Q&A sessions have not only been known for providing insight into the, the game making process, but they've been known for super smart fans and super passionate people asking the difficult questions. So the Q&A is kind of, uh, it's a community, it's all loved spirit. You get to have that direct conversation with someone who is responsible for making your game. But we all know Blizzard's had a bit of a problem recently. They've been accused of being pro-China. They've been very, very heavy on the censorship. They got rid of Blitzchung. So you'd think after that huge kind of kickback against them that they would want to show, no, 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 we're, we're not pro we're not pro-censorship, we're pro-democracy. We are pro-choice. We are pro-player interaction. And how do they do that? They remove the ability to ask live questions at the Q&A session. They will only be answering questions they've already chosen. Now, come on, come on, there's no way they're going to ask themselves the difficult questions. They're not going to be on stage with a big fishbowl full of questions, reach in, open one up, and it says, why are you censoring everyone? No, that's not how this works. They are going to have every question picked and chosen specifically to be easy to answer. They're going to throw themselves the softball questions. They're going to give themselves the leading questions. It's going to be so stupid. They're going to open the first question up and it's going to be something like, why are you guys so brilliant? And they'll all laugh and smile and go, oh, I didn't know the fans could ask that. No, we didn't ask that. Some corporate bigwig decided to ask that because you realised if you actually let the people have their say, if you actually spoke to your fans directly and asked for the feedback that you so sorely need, you'd realise... You guys are not doing well. So they have removed 
the ability to ask live questions. Can you imagine even being in that Q&A session? It will be a room full of people sat down watching developers answer their own bloody questions about the game. And there is meme potential here. Can you imagine if one of them gets it wrong? Can you imagine, I really hope this happens, if Blizzard set the questions themselves and still can't answer it? That would be fantastic. But what they've done in my eyes is they've effectively said, no guys, we're not pro-censorship. Here, watch. And then they've censored you. You don't fight for a cause by doing the opposite of that cause. This is like bombing for peace. It doesn't work. So, Blizzard, let's see exactly how well that Q&A session goes, because you know, for a fact, if everyone were allowed to ask the questions they want to ask, you wouldn't be able to answer them, because the questions would be, why are you doing this? And your answer would be, money. But you're not allowed to say that, are you? So you're going to ask yourself the questions. It wouldn't surprise me if one of the questions was, why was Battle for Azeroth the best and most loved expansion? Because a developer would have to ask that, because no one that plays your game actually believes that. Right, ladies and gents, it's Sunday. I'm going to go and have an early night. Got a lovely cup of tea here. Got some biscuits. Again, PCG720, thank you for the nice comment. And I think I'll be doing that kind of conversational style much, much more. Any of you guys, again, the Discord is in the description below. If you want to chat to me live on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Josh Strife Hayes. Let me know what you're up to as well. Let's hope that EA does come back to Steam. Let's see if Baldur's Gate 3 can live up to the hype that I really want it to have. And let's hope that the first PS5 game, if it is a remake, is a damn good one. But for now, let's all continue to hate Blizzard for their pro-censorship stance. Take care, guys. Thank you for your time. You have a great night.